God bless everybody. Welcome to Wildfire Church. My name is Ivan. My name is Chris. And we're so glad that you guys have joined us here today. That's right. Bienvenido, mi gente. Gracias por conectarse. Ahora, ahora mismo, en un par de minutos, nosotros vamos a para la adoración. Pero antes de eso, vamos a hablar de esta serie. Yeah, our new series that we're starting tonight. Uh, it's going to be called My Purpose. My, My Purpose. You hear that? My Purpose. Mm. Uh, so you're the youth pastor, Chris. What do you think this uh, preaching, what this series is going to uh, be about for the youth? I, I believe that um, this um, series is going to be very impactful for the youth so they could actually know and acknowledge their purpose in this earth. Because, you know, a lot of things, you know, a lot of in, in this world, um, the, the identity of the world, I always try to place that youth as, the, as they are nobody or as they are nothing in, in this earth. But just to for them to acknowledge and know that you know they have a purpose they have a calling in this earth and that god has greater purpose for them amen amen yeah, yeah. and i'm sure that this series is going to impact not just the youth but everybody because right, we're all right. trying to find our purpose that's we're right. all some of us we throw that word around purpose, purpose but we yeah. don't really know what it means that's right, that's right. so i'm sure in this series that wildfire church is starting on tonight that's right. we're gonna find out what that is and we're gonna learn what our true purpose is amen right you said it even better than i can say myself <laughs> my brother yo but. so every we want everybody to share this live stream all right share it in your wall share it uh t text this link to somebody that you know this is a word that everybody needs everybody needs to know what their purpose is that's right and for my youth uh, stay connected subscribe share with your friends you know be, be you know bother them if you have to just do it you know just um, do it yep. just, just do it you know the Nike sign just do it you get what I'm saying so like I said I hope you I uh, hope to see you guys connected like I said and subscribe man that's right so right now we're going to go into a worship experience that's all right. right so let's go worship god together in spirit and in truth Amen. all right let's go into worship god bless you guys god bless you everybody i hope everybody's doing good everybody's well at their homes um i hope that you're able to worship with us right at this moment um if you know the songs and even if you don't know them just worship just praise the lord glorify him and be thankful because you are healthy and you're safe at home. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We worship you, Lord. Salva. Restaura nos, aviva nos, oh Dios. Salva nos, restaura nos, aviva nos, oh Dios. Salvano 
us with your glory, Lord. Come and fill the sub. Come and fill us up, Jesus. Your mighty love. You provide the fire. I'll provide the sacrifice. Pour out your spirit, Ooh. I will open up inside, say, you provide the fire, I'll provide the sacrifice. You pour out your spirit, ooh, I will open up inside. Say, fill me up, God, fill me up, God, fill me up, God, fill me up, say, fill me up, fill the fire I'll provide the sacrifice Lord you pour out your spirit yeah. I will open up inside say you provide you provide the fire provide the sacrifice you provide the spirit you pour out your spirit
you go ahead and raise your hand and say, I am thirsty, Jesus. So overflow. So overflow. God with our worship and right now we want to worship God with our tithes and our offerings so right now as you see down there uh, we do our tithes and offerings through Cash App so all you have to do is download this app called Cash App and just look up We Are Wildfire We Are Wildfire and there you can say your tithes your offerings and or your donations if you feel like you want to help this ministry move forward so right there where you're at we're going to pray right now for those tithes and those offerings Thank you, Father God, for all the things that you're doing, Lord Almighty, for the things that you're doing in these times, Father God, that we know these are hard times, Lord, but we still, God, believe in you, God. We still trust you, Lord, with everything that we have, Almighty. So right here, right now, here's our sacrifice, Lord Almighty. Here's what is worth, what is yours, Jesus. So we thank you, Father God, for all the things that you've done, for the ways that you have blessed us, for the things that you have given us, God Almighty, which we don't even deserve, Lord. Thank you, Father God, for being such a good Father for us, Lord, and for providing God in every single situation, Lord. In Jesus' name, we all pray. Amen. So right now, we're going to show you a video of the things that we have been doing um, here at Wildfire Reach, which is where we use our tithes and our offerings to help out our community. Michael, we got you. Matthew, you have been blessed. Leon, eres bendecida en nombre del Señor. No somos una iglesia muy grande. We're not a big church. Y no tenemos los mismos recursos. And we don't have the same resources. Pero lo poquito que tengamos. But the little that we have. Queremos darle y ser de bendición. We want to give and be a blessing. Por aquellos que han podido darnos a nosotros for uh, those that were able to give to us por esas personas que son fieles for those people that are faithful podemos entonces bendecir a estas personas we can bless these people amen amen gracias una vez más thank you to everybody Day close. Day close. god bless wildfire church and welcome for tonight we have a brand new series called my purpose and I'm excited for this series because we are going to be answering your question on how to find your purpose, what is your purpose, and what God is saying about that. So with all of that, let's get ready for the Word of God. If you, are, if you can go with me to Colossians chapter 1, verse 15 to 16. And I, I, wanna, I, I want you to just comment and let me know when you're ready, when you have that verse, say amen. Once again, this is found, your verse is found in Colossians chapter 1, verse 15 and 16. This is where God is going to be speaking to us about this new series where we're just starting, okay? We're just doing an introduction tonight about what we are going to be talking about for the next couple of, of weeks and days. At Sunday, we're going to go and talk a little bit more, but this is just an introduction. So if you have the verse, please comment below. Say amen. Send an emoji. Let me know that you have the verse ready. Once again, that verse is going to be below as well, but it is found in Colossians chapter 1, verse 15 through 16. Amen? Amen. All right, so the word of God reads like this in the name of the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Listen to what God is saying. The Son is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For in him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, 
visible and invisible, whether thrones or power or rulers or authority, all things, listen to this, all things have been created through him and for him. I'm going to say that one more time because I think that that specific sentence is very important for you to understand when it comes to knowing your purpose. Again, the last sentence says, all things, all things, that means everything, has been created through him and for him. So when we are answering what is our purpose, I want you to write my first point down and make sure you got pens and paper to make sure that you, are, you, you get what God is trying to tell you. Amen. So make sure you write our first point, and it's going to be on, uh, underneath as well. But I want you to be ready because here at Wildfire Church, we're learning, we're growing, we're discipling. So my first point is called this, purpose and calling. Purpose and calling. And again, I'm just going to go a little bit about this because I'm not going to go too much into it. I want you to tune in Sunday for what? A little bit more detail. Amen. So the first point is purpose and calling. And I want you, I want to define what purpose is so you don't get confused. Amen. So purpose is defined like this. is the reason for which something is done or an action, uh, I'm sorry, for something that is done or created or which something exists. So again, purpose. So if we're talking about your purpose, purpose is the reason for which something is done, why you do things. You know, people ask you, what was the purpose of you doing that? Or what was the purpose of something that was created? Why was that created? Or the reason why something exists. That is the purpose. And we're going to go a little bit deeper about your purpose, but that's the definition of purpose. Amen? So then calling, I want to define calling because it's two different things. Your purpose is not your calling, and your calling is different. So I want to define that. Amen? So calling, write this down. Calling is a strong inner impulse towards a particular course of action. It's Especially when accompanied by a conviction of divine influence. Now I'm going to say that one more time. A strong, the calling, your calling or calling, is a strong inner impulse towards a particular course of action, especially when accompanied by a conviction of a divine influence. So simple words is when you have something in you that is calling you. It is pushing you to do something, amen, particularly when that, that is convicted by the Spirit, convicted by God, when God says you need to do something, like you need to speak to somebody about that, or you need to pray about something. You know, you have that inner feeling that comes from inside that is calling you to do something. That is what it's calling is all about. And the thing is that I want to make clear that some of us go out there and, and think that we're doing our purpose and you become a doctor, or you, you have money, and all these people are doing that. But when you're doing your real purpose, all right, when you are on your real purpose, you will always feel accomplished and fulfilled. So when you don't feel like you're in your role or in your job, and you don't feel like, man, I feel like I'm not doing anything, or I feel like I, I can do more, that is God telling you that that's not your purpose, that you're not doing your real purpose. So again, when you're sitting at your job, and maybe some people are like, I need to change career. Like, and you see people going through different, I can't tell what I want to do in school, and you keep switching back and forth. It's because the stuff that you're doing is not fulfilling you. So if it's not fulfilling you, it's not your real purpose. Purpose, when you're walking in your purpose, man, you feel like you're good. Like this is natural. You feel comfortable. I'm not saying you won't feel uh, a little bit heavy or burdened because that comes with everything. But it, it feels like you're doing something. It feels like you're contributing to something and you feel good. You don't feel like, I don't know, I need to be doing something. Like it feels like you're actually doing something in the world. And that's what happens when you're your real purpose. So I want you to check yourself because if you're feeling like, man, I don't feel fulfilled. I don't feel like I don't know, I, I need to change it up or I need to change career. People say that all the time, like I need to, I just need to change career, change your path. That's because 
God is telling you that's not your real purpose. It's not fulfilling your soul. It's not fulfilling what's inside. So what is your purpose? What is the purpose? What is, what is it you're talking about? Let me, let me tell you right now. All right? Your purpose, your purpose is to glorify God, and you do that. Now listen to this. Pay attention because I don't want you to get lost. For those who want to know your purpose, write this down, all right, because I'm giving you the, the secret of life. I'm, I'm giving you the meaning of life right here, and I, I don't want you to get confused. Your purpose is to glorify God. And you do that by doing your calling. So your purpose, my purpose is to glorify God, and I can do my purpose through my calling. Okay? Now, your purpose is more important than your calling. But you cannot achieve your purpose without your calling. I want you to write it down because this is important. I want you to, to understand that. Again, your purpose is more important than your calling, but you cannot do your purpose without your calling. This is, this, this is some good thing. I hope that you're writing this down when you're trying to achieve your purpose. Amen? Now, I want you to, I want you to go a little deeper in your calling then. Now, what is your calling? What are you talking about? What is it that, that my calling is? Well, your calling, let's put it like this. Your calling is the road you take to get to your purpose, okay? Your calling, all right, is the road you take to get to your purpose. Your purpose is the destination. In Christ, we all have the same destination. If you're in Jesus, we're all going to the same place. It's the same purpose, all right? So the destination is your purpose, that we all have uniquely different tools. All right, or purpose and gifts that gets us to that destination. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna, I'm, it's too much words, and I want to make it simple for you, okay? Again, think about your calling as the road you take to get to your purpose. Now, your purpose is your destination. That's what you're gonna get. That's what you wanna do. Your calling is the road you take to get there. And many of us, have different tools that we use or gifts. We have different gifts that we use to get us in that road to get to our purpose, which is our destination. And man, I'm going to put it a, a little bit more simple. Example, all right, we are, um, we're in this journey, all right, that we call life. All right, we're all in our life. We're on this journey. And our destination, we know that is our purpose. That's our destiny to do our purpose. And I already said it's to glorify God. Amen. So our destination is our purpose, and some say, no, Pastor Mike, our purpose is, is to have eternal life, to get to heaven. I see that more of a pit stop, that when you're in life and you don't know God, you're still on the road, all right? But then in the middle of the road, you stop to get gas, to get direction, direction and now you can get to the right road to get to heaven, all right? So salvation is just a stop to get you on the right track to do your purpose. And once you get saved, amen, now you can do your purpose, which is to glorify God. I want you to go with me, all right, to Corinthians, 1 Corinthians, because I, I, this is what you're, we're saying about glorifying God, your purpose and all that stuff. All right, it's found 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31. All right, again, 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Verse 31, it's going to be right below, and I'm going, to, I'm going to read it for you, okay? It says this, so whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. So everything you do on this earth, you have to do it for what? For your purpose, which is to glorify God. So your destination is your purpose. Your calling is the road you take, and the car you drive is the gift that God has given you. The Holy Spirit, that's just a GPS. All right? That's the GPS that guides you what road to take, where not to take, 
or danger. You can't turn right or you can't turn left. Keep going. He is the one who is guiding you to get to that destination that you need to do, which is to always glorify God. That's what the Bible said. The Holy Spirit will always glorify God. Jesus will always glorify. It's not glorifying yourself. It's glorifying God. That's what the GPS, when you make the wrong turn, it says, "Uh -uh uh-uh-uh, you need to turn back again because it's not about you. It's about God. So turn around, get on the right road, and let's glorify God. So now, it doesn't matter. I want you to be clear, right? It doesn't matter what car you drive. We always say, what's it about car? I kind of get confused. I'm going to tell you, your car is your gift. Every single one of you, when you were born, God's giving you a gift. When you're using your gift, that's, the, that's the, the thing you sit on that you drive on the road. So you're using your gift on the road to glorify God. So that car, it doesn't matter what car you're driving. It doesn't matter what gift you do as long as everybody glorify God. As long as that gift takes you to your purpose, which is to glorify God. So my car is to be a pastor. That's my car. That's my gift. That's, you know, what I, I need to do. Others' cars are to be a worshiper or to, or to clean or to teach. Others is to be a doctor or, or to be a mom or a dad or a businessman or a businesswoman. That's what they need to do. But everything you do, you need to do it to glorify God, which is your purpose. All right? So we have, obviously, we have different gifts. All right? But... None of them are greater than the other. Why? Because they are tools to get us to your destination. They're just tools to get us. It's just the vehicle that you're using to get where you're going. But the problem is that we spend so much time arguing over each other's gift that we forget about our destination. We spend so much time admiring somebody else's gift that we forget what is our purpose. So what does that look like? Let me tell you. It looks like a person that's on the road. Obviously, we're talking about the calling. So calling is your road. It looks like a person on the road. And, you know, you're driving by. You know, have you ever done that when you're driving by and somebody is going a little faster? Okay. And you're like, hey, what's up? I like your car. You know, you start driving. You're like, well, I, I like your car. That's a good car. I like, I like your gift. Now, you took your eyes off the road, and you crashed your car and are stuck to the side of the road because you decided that somebody else's gift was more important to the one you're already driving. Now you can't go get to your destination. This is why you can't be looking at somebody else's gift and be driving to the same purpose. You can't do that. So while you're looking at that one, now you're just crashing your side of the road and you're stuck. You're not fulfilling your purpose because you think that your gift is less than the person that is driving and somebody else's gift. Or we see, for example, we see a friend, all right, that have their brand new 2020 Ferrari. And we begin to get jealous of them because their gift looks better than my gift. Your gift, like, yo, you can, it's more comfortable. Like, you know, what does that look like? Well, that, that friend had, had, I don't know, studied music, so it's easier. They have connections, and they're able to do a CD, and I'm here stuck that I can sing, but I ain't got no money, and I can't do it. Like, I, I, I want that, and we begin to get jealous. That is when ministries start getting jealous, and they start fighting because I, why can't I have that God? And now you start complaining to God, why didn't he give you that gift? The gift doesn't matter. The gift is just the vehicle that gets you to get to your purpose. As long as it runs and it gets from point A to point B, I don't care if it has air conditioning. I don't care what it is. I need to do my purpose. I need to focus on what God has given me and be able to get there. Now, you can tune your car. So many of you are like, yeah, I'm making modifications to my car, making it run, making a little turbo. You can do that to your gift. You can do that. Instead of asking God to give you a new gift that you want their gift, I want their gift of preaching. Mm-hmm. I, I don't, I don't, I don't want to be a singer. Or, or I'm a preacher. I don't want to be a preacher. I want to be a singer. Instead of telling God what gift should you have gotten, maybe you should work on your gift 
to get better. Because that's what we need to do. We get better ourselves. We modify our car. It runs a little faster. It runs a little better. It's more efficient. And that way, I can fulfill my purpose. It's not about what other people have. It's about working what God has given you. We're all in the same road. All Christians are on the same road to get what we need to do, our destination. Our purpose is to glorify God. Amen? Now, the problem is when you do that, this is how the enemy keeps the church from going forward. When different people look at other people and start getting jealous, I want that gift. Why can't I do that? Why can't I preach like that? Why can't I act like that? Why can't I sing like that? Why can't I do this? Why don't I look like that? It takes the focus out of completely what you're supposed to do. And the church is stuck because we spend so much time wanting what somebody else has had that you've just forgotten about your ministry. This is not a competition. We're all in the same boat. We're all one body. We're all one church. This is why Wildfire Church, we're all a family. We're all working together to get to the same goal, which is to glorify God. And God is going to bring, this is why God brings different gifts to the church so the boss can keep going, so people can keep going. So what am I trying to tell you? I'm telling you that the church needs your gift. The church needs your gift. What is your gift? It doesn't matter what is your gift. It could be cleaning. You could be the best person cleaning, or it could be the best person cooking. But all that you do, 1 Corinthians says, everything you do, you do it for the glory of God. It doesn't mean glorify the man. It doesn't mean glorify yourself, because now you're taking a wrong turn. And this is when the GPS, the Holy Spirit, start convicting you, telling you, ah, you're not, you're not doing it right. You've forgotten your destination. You need to do a U-turn. You need to turn around. You need, to start, you need to start thinking about what you, you got on this road for. Remember when you accepted Jesus, that he forgot your sins? You know, he didn't forget. He, he wasn't talking about, hey, look at other person's sin. No, he was talking about your sin. I forgave you. I love you. He talks about you. So forget about everybody else. And remember what we're doing this for because you love God. Because you love Jesus. Because we want to bring all the glory on the other team. That is our purpose. That's what we were created for. That's what we, that's what fulfills us. Every time, like I'd rather God tell me good job than a hundred people tell me good job. The problem is that our ego gets in our way. Like, you know, when your car looks good, look at my car, you'll be taking pictures of your car. Like, look at it. And people do that and make it about themselves. And it's not about yourself because you can have a nice looking car and it doesn't even run. Like, it doesn't even run. Like, it's just for show. Like, have you ever seen cars that, yo, like, it looks nice on the outside and the inside are dirty? They're just ugly. Like, the air condition don't even work. Like, from the outside, you'll be looking good and you attract people. Right? People come to you and be like, yo, that's a nice car. But then when they go into it, be like, yo, you need to get me out. Like, I don't, this, this, it sounds bad. It sounds like it has a hole on the, on, like, on the floor. Like, I can see it looks bad. And some of us, that's how we look like. We pay so much attention to look good, to have the right look, to have the right attitude, like I'm a preacher or I'm a pastor. But when people go deep inside of you and make a connection, you ain't got nobody, nothing to offer. You just have a dead fruit. You're not getting them anywhere. There isn't. So why don't we just stop trying to look the part and start changing from the inside and working on your gift? Because you, are, are, are right now, those people are trying to duplicate the other friend, you know, that car that you saw on the internet. Yo, I need to get my car to be like that. But it doesn't matter what it looks like if your car on the inside is a mess. It's a hot mess. If it doesn't have fuel, it's not going to run either. If you don't have the presence of God, your gift is not going to run. And that's what I'm trying to tell you, that we need those components. We need the Holy Spirit to guide us. We need to know what our purpose is, which is our destination, which is to glorify God. We need to know if we are in the right calling, because the calling is the road that you're taking. Maybe, and, that, and, and let me tell you something. If you are not meant to be singing, don't, be try, don't, don't try to sing. Don't, because now you're on the wrong road. You are in the wrong calling. If you are in the wrong calling and doing the wrong thing, it'll, it, you'll have to make a U-turn or trying to 
go into the right road to get where you're at. And that takes longer. The longer you are in the wrong road, the longer you will take to achieve your purpose. So check yourself. If you're not meant to be singing, yo, don't try to sing. If you're not meant to be preaching, yo, brother, stop. Be happy with the gift that God has given you. That's what you need to do. So, again, I said if, if, if he can get, the devil can get you distracted by trying to have another gift, this, mm. this will stop from your calling. The other thing that stops us is the idea, okay, that our purpose is something that serves us. And we spend all of our lives searching and asking and paying people to tell us what the meaning of life is. Like I'm going to go to this person, I don't know, my counselor, and ask him, yo, what's the meaning of life? What am I supposed to do? Can you tell me? And that happens to me all the time. Do you know how many people come up to me asking, yo, Pastor Mike, what's my purpose? What am I supposed to do? And we spend so much time trying to buy books, talking with people, trying to figure out what is the calling when all that we have to do is know what we were created for. And again, Colossians that we just read, Colossians 1, all right, Colossians 1, 15 through 16. Look at the last sentence. All things have been created through him and for him. It wasn't created for you. It, your gift was not created for you. Your gift was created for God, for Jesus. It's not about you. Come on, somebody say, touch the person next to you and say, it's not about you. Tell, tell the tell the Tell your brother that's next to you, it's not about you. It, in fact, comment below and say, it's not about you. You were created for God and by God. And if you spend so much time if of your life trying to figure it out, your life has gone by, and now you're mm -hmm. wasted all this time that you could have been doing your purpose because you thought it was about you. Because you tried to figure out something else. Now, you can do, you, you, some of us uh, can do five times. Have you ever seen people change careers? Five times. They spend all this time changing careers, looking for their purpose. But that's when, that's when you see that they're not fulfilled. Your purpose has not fulfilled you. That thing that you're doing is not fulfill you. Again, I'm going to tell you, check yourself. Check to see that if the past that you are right now stops what God is doing in your life, where it's glorifying you. Now I'm not saying, Pastor Mike said I need to quit my job right now and I need to go find. No, 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 no. Find out. Spend time with God telling you what is your purpose. The more you work on the things with God, the more he's going to tell you what you're meant to do. Again, you could, your purpose to glorify God, it might be by being a doctor. It might be by being a lawyer. It might be by being a mom. You don't know that until you spend more time with God for him to reveal you what is your purpose. So the only way you're doing is by coming to church or by watching online right now because you can't come to church. Soon enough, we'll be able to be together. Amen? So again, let us stop having these flat tires because this is what happens. When we take our eyes off, when we try to change so much stuff, we get a flat tire under gift, and then you stop your gift, and you're not able to work. Let's stop doing that. I'm going to close with this. Very simple. I'm going to close with the first verse that we started. Okay, my purpose, my calling. This is the intro. On Sunday, we're going to go a little bit deeper on your calling, your purpose, a little bit more. What is it? What are the different callings? What, are, what is the God wants? But this is the intro. Because I want you to get used to this, all right? Colossians 1, 15 through 16. All things have been created through him and for him. I want you to remember that. I want you to tell that to somebody. I want you to write it in the chat. All things were created. You were created. All things were created for him and by him. Amen? Again, let me, let me, let me finish with this. Let me finish with this. Your calling 
is the road you take to get to your purpose. Your purpose is your destination. It's where you're going. Everybody in Christ, everybody who has accepted Jesus has the same destination or purpose. But we have uniquely different tools or gifts to get us to that destination. Your gift that God has given you is the car. Your calling is the road to get you to the destination to glorify God. Would you stand with me tonight? Stand up and let's bow our heads so we're able to pray that God will able us to reshift and that this word starts making you think about what is your purpose and what is your calling. Now that I've given you your purpose, you know your purpose. You don't have to be texting me and calling me, what's my purpose? What's my? No, your purpose is to glorify God. Are you glorifying God? That is the question that we are about to pray. The things that you're doing in your life, do they glorify God? You bow down your head and close your eyes and we will pray. Father God, I give you thanks tonight that we're gathered here and you have told us finally what is our purpose. Our purpose is to glorify you. Doesn't matter what the calling is. There are many different callings. They're all going to lead us to the same place. There are many different gifts. They're all going to lead us to the same place. So, Father God, let me learn to love my gift. Let me learn to understand my gift. Let me learn to perfect my gift for your glory. Let me not be jealous with somebody else's gift. But let me understand it. Let me, let me grow around people who will help me. Be better at my calling. Thank you, Father God, for this word. Thank you for speaking to us. Thank you for setting us free. Thank you for reshifting our focus. Father God, we give you thanks. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I give you thanks for joining us tonight. As we close tonight, I want to let you guys know this. From our end, for the Wildfire Church family, I want to thank you for coming. I love you. And we hope you have a blessed day. God bless.